Hello friends, in today's video, I will be talking about mepoplating for distal femur, that is minimally invasive percutaneous osteosynthesis. I will be talking about some simple steps that are going to be helpful whenever you are planning such a procedure. So if we see a comminuted fracture of distal femur which is involving the joint also, the picture is somewhat like this. We have the intact diaphysis, then we have the diaphyseo metaphyseal combination, then we have the articular fragments. So what we do, we reduce the articular fracture usually under direct vision or some sometimes indirectly they can also be reduced wherever the fracture is simple and for this part we should avoid opening it because opening it can cause damage to the vascularity and soft tissue attachment of these fragments while the articular part has good blood supply because of the cancerous bone and capsular attachments and anatomical reduction is often feasible in articular fragments while this comminuted part is multifragmentary and has soft tissue attachments only through the periosteum and the muscle layer which is surrounding it so if we try to expose these fragments and reduce them perfectly we are going to hamper their vascularity so it's better not to disturb this area. While this part, intact diaphysis, is not damaged, it is having good vascularity, good soft tissue attachment, so it can be used for placement of screws proximally. And often we don't need to expose this part because only thing we need here is to place the screws. So we can expose this part, we should avoid exposure of this commented part, while in this part we can expose to some extent just for the placement of the screws. So if we see the skin layer, it is actually the bone is lying very deep, while the articular part is somewhat close to the skin. This comminuted part is often surrounded by the muscles, therefore there are chances of good healing if we don't disturb this part. And when we plan for minimally invasive percutaneous osteosynthesis, what we do, we make an opening here which could be of a variable size depending upon the articular reduction we want. The incision can be somewhat anterior, somewhat lateral depending upon the simplicity or complexity of the articular fracture. And we reduce the fragments perfectly as much as possible, then try to pass a plate through this area, the terminal part, and span whole of the combination and put screws here and put screws in the proximal part. So we are actually spanning the combination and the healing here is going to be because of relative stability because some amount of micro motion is going to happen and because of the intact vascularity of these fragments, we are going to have callus formation and that callus will consolidate to form the bony union. And for proximal part, we only need small holes for placement of screws that are sufficient for passing the sleeves through which the drill holes can be made and then subsequently screws can be placed. So first thing we do is the articular reduction and stabilization of the articular block. I'm not going deep into the techniques that are required for articular reduction but this is just a representative image that how we get the reduction done. So we reduce the articular fragments using joystick techniques or under direct vision then pass multiple lateral to medial K wires and we check in the lateral view also that the reduction should be good one. Often when we don't get the perfect letter view we are confused whether the reduction is good or not in such a scenario you can just rotate the wire assembly slightly internal or in external direction that will help you in getting the good lateral view like this but if you are still confused just see the metaphysical flare of both the condyles this flare should be parallel to each other if there is gross angulation like this cortex is angulated posteriorly while this is in anterior direction that means the reduction is not good so you have to achieve that kind of reduction in which both of these flares of the metaphysis and the posterior condyles are parallel like this once you are satisfied with the reduction of the articular block in ap and lateral view then you have to go for the alignment of this articular block with the remaining part of the diaphysis that means the angulation of the joint line that means this is the joint line should be perfectly aligned with the shaft that means there should not be any varus or valgus angulation often with metaphysical combination it is very difficult to see whether the reduction is perfect or not what you can do you can either measure the angle between the diaphysal axis that is here with the joint line and then see whether this angle is slightly more than 90 degree or not normally the femur is in slight valgus that is around 7 to 15 degree valgus and there are some other techniques also like you can measure the mechanical axis using a cautery wire from the hip center to the center of the ankle joint and the center of the knee joint that is this notch part should be slightly medial to that line. You can fine tune the reduction in later steps also but for initial part when you are using the K wires for provisional reduction you can achieve the reduction in this manner also. So these wires are actually securing the articular block. You can slightly tilt the articular block in valgus or varus depending upon the alignment you want with the diaphysis. Then in lateral view you have to check for any overriding of the proximal fragment. That means the proximal fragment should be aligned with the distal fragment in lateral view also. There should not be any extension or flexion of this distal fragment in relation to the diaphysis. So whenever the fracture is completed you can simply push the proximal fragment posteriorly 
whenever there is entry or translation and then check for the lateral view and the CR and the alignment should be like this that means the anterior cortex of the distal fragment and the anterior cortex of the proximal fragment should be aligned in a single line and once you are sure about the alignment in AP and lateral view then you can pass a wire from the articular rib and be careful that this wire should not hamper your implant placement because we are going to place the lateral plate on this part therefore the wire should not pass through this area this wire should go close to the articular rib and then you have to direct it towards the diaphysis that means somewhere here even if you are not getting good purchase in the diaphysis then also there should not be any issue this wire may remain in intramedullary cavity and contribute to the stability so this was the letter wire which is going into the diaphysis after checking whether the ap alignment is good or not you can pass a medial wire which can be passed from any area from the medial condyle towards the diaphysis so now you have secured the assembly of the article block to the diaphysis in both AP and lateral views and the reduction appears to be appropriate in both AP and lateral views. So this kind of picture you'll be getting after securing the reduction in AP and lateral views. We have wires from the lateral side, we have the wires exiting from the medial side, we have the we have the oblique wires from lateral and medial side as well. These are the exiting wires which are seen from the medial side. So you see these wires are actually going to hamper your implant placement. So what you can do, you can just push these wires so that lateral surface of the article block is free from any wire prominence. So your lateral surface is now completely free and you can easily pass the plate over the surface. Now the next important thing is to mark the entry incision for your plate placement. You can use any instrument to locate the terminal part of the article block and your terminal screw should be just above the topmost extent of the article surface. That means your terminal screw should be somewhere here. Therefore the position of the plate should end somewhere here. You see this is the terminal screw of the plate and this is the extent of incision you want. So we want the incision to be somewhat of, of this length because this much space is required for placement of the periarticle screws. So you see now we are giving the incision according to the size that we have determined. First layer is the subcutaneous layer. Then after dissecting the subcutaneous layer, we have the iliotibial band. It should be exposed clearly and split properly. And once it has been clearly split, then you can feel the synovial layer or a fatty soft tissue layer beneath the iliotibial band. The space should be adequate for placement of the plate. Your plate will be lying beneath the iliotibial band. And your incision should be somewhere central over the lateral femoral condyle because that is the area where you will find the iliotibial band with good space underneath. And if you go more posteriorly, then you will have difficulty in placement of the plate because the collateral ligament and the capsule are thick in this part and your plate should lie slightly anterior to the red part. So it is better to go for an incision which is midway in the anteroposterior extent of the lateral condyle. So once iliotibial band has been split, you can simply use your index finger to bluntly create a space underneath the iliotibial band for placement of your plate. So you see the terminal part of the plate is smooth and tapered both in AP and mediolateral extent. So this smooth tapered part can actually be used just like a periosteum elevator that will create a space in a submuscular plane. If you are not comfortable, you can use a corpse elevator also that can be used to create space for positioning of your plate. You see the femur is not in straight line, it is bored. So what we need to do, we have to slide the plate or the corpse elevator in such a way that we keep on feeding the bone while sliding it proximally like this. Similarly, we can use the plate also and slide it while feeling for the bone. And even if your terminal part of the plate is not perfectly positioned, that means it is coming anteriorly or posteriorly, you need not to worry about that because there are simple techniques by which you can centralize the plate in the proximal fragment just by using the locking sleeves. Now you have to see whether the plate has been positioned properly or not. You see the hole of last screw is somewhere here. So we want this hole to be at this level. So a locking sleeve should always be placed in the terminal part of the plate because that will help you in sliding the plate in downward or upward direction. Once you are satisfied with the position of the screw hole, then you can pass a drill bit or a thick K wire through this sleeve that will help in securing the plate position in correct position in relation to the articular block. So we have placed a 2.5 mm K wire. So our distal position of the plate is now secure but we are not sure about the proximal placement that we'll see in the coming slides. Now if you see, now in comminuted fracture, once we have positioned our plate in the distal fragment, still the combination part can collapse. That means there can be some shortening of the fracture side because we have stabilized this part only. That means this part, but the proximal part is yet to be stabilized. That means this whole article block 
can still migrate proximally that means there can be some shortening of the fracture so what we can do after securing the drill bit in this distal fragment we can give traction and see in the c arm and compare with the other limb whether the length is perfect or not once we are sure that the length is perfect we can give a stab incision proximally at the level of topmost locking hole and pass a drill bit at that level now the drill bit will remain secure in this part and one drill bit will remain secure in this part and this assembly the plate and drill bit assembly will prevent any overriding at the fracture side that means the fracture is not going to collapse now however it can still angulate that we'll see in the coming slides you see once we have secured the drill bit in this part and it's in this part still the fracture can angulate but since we have placed only one drill bit in this part and this part we can still correct the reduction in the lateral view you see this drill bit is now acting as a center of this rotation and we are correcting our reduction with the axis over the drill bit same way we can correct the angulation of the proximal fragment also like this in the lateral view but if we have placed multiple k wires or drill bits through the plate we will not be able to correct this angulation because two wires or drill bits will prevent any toggling of this fragment in relation to the plate because the plate will remain in constant position and this second drill bit will prevent the reduction in lateral view same way in the proximal fragment also if we place two drill bits we are not going to correct the angulation here so always place only one drill bit proximally and distally once you are sure that the length of the fracture site has been properly restored now you see we have positioned the plate in lateral view like this and you see the proximal part of the plate is slightly anterior but i told you not to worry about that you see it is slightly anterior here also but in the articular part it is in a good position so our drill bit is lying here so that will secure the articular block and after restoring the length of the fracture what we can do we can put a stab incision while checking for the lateral view at a position which is slightly posterior or central over the diaphysis and through that stab incision we can pass an artery forceps and feel for the locking hole and after we have done that we can pass our sleeve through that stab incision and lock it in the locking hole and with that sleeve we can actually toggle it posteriorly to make it centralized over the diaphysis you see the plate has been slid in a central location with the help of sleeve so once that has been achieved we can pass our drill bit through the sleeve that will be lying in a central location on the proximal segment you see after doing that we have centralized the plate in the lower part also which was anterior in the previous step so this step we have already achieved now we are planning for this step after securing the length of the fracture site and positioning of the plate in a central location in the diaphysis with the help of a locking sleeve. So we are drilling the hole proximally and always get a bicortical purchase with this drill bit. Otherwise there will be some toggling of the plate in inferior or superior direction. But if you are getting bicortical purchase that will not happen. The bicortical purchase has to happen like this. If your drill bit ends here only then also their plate can slide in proximal and distal direction because there will be some toggling here but if you are getting bicortical purchase that toggling will not happen once we have placed drill bits in proximal and distal segment check for the lateral view correct any angulation that was happening here or here as we have seen in the previous slide so once you are sure that alignment is perfect and if there is some instability in this direction that means the proximal fragment is going anteriorly your, can, your assistant can just push this proximal fragment posteriorly and then after ensuring good alignment you can pass all the screws in the distal segment now before passing the screws in this terminal part always check whether the plate is having good contact on this metaphysical flare or not because often the plate might not be well positioned on this part and often there can be gap at the fracture sides so you need to compress the fracture and also get the plate perfectly seated over the lateral surface if the plate is slightly off then you can use a king tong clamp or any such other clamp that can compress the plate against this lateral surface then only you have to put all the screws in this terminal part so that you are sure that your articular fragment is perfectly aligned with the plate terminal part and as far as the diaphysal part is concerned that will be addressed after we have gained good purchase of distal screws in the articular block so here you see we have positioned the plate perfectly on the lateral surface in the distal segment now in previous slide i told you that you have to ensure that the alignment of the fractural distal fragment should be correct in terms of wares and valgus it is it should be slightly valgus but in combinated fracture it is difficult and you can use the diaphysial axis to measure the angle of the articular surface with the diaphysial axis to know whether it is correct or not 
and there's another indirect method by which you can see whether your alignment is going in varus or valgus you need to see the direction of the sleeve so your screw should pass perfectly parallel to the articular surface <clears throat> so if your screw direction is going downwards that means entering here and exiting somewhere here that means your fracture alignment is in varus if your screw is going in a proximal direction that means going somewhere here and not parallel to the articular surface that means your fracture is in slight valgus so you see this is the screw direction and it is passing almost parallel to the articular surface of distal femur that means the alignment is normal or if you are erring you have to err in direction of valgus that means the slight valgus is well tolerated so all the screws you see they are either in slightly upward direction in relation to the distal femur articular surface or you can say they are just parallel so that is our target and before committing to the screw placement always check this thing and if you want to make slight correction then you'll need to remove one of these wires because these wires are going to block the rotation of the articular block either in valgus or varus and if you want to add some correction either in valgus or varus direction you'll not be able to do so so at least one wire has to be loosened or removed and once you are sure that the alignment is good then you can pass locking screws in the distal segment and as you place these screws serially always check for the lateral view so any change in the alignment of the fracture should be noted before it's too late so once you place the screw always check for the lateral view then only place the other screws and sometimes one or two screws are very close to the articular surface and you should avoid placement of those screws you can use the remaining holes but avoid any screw that is very close to the trochlea because it might appear within the bone but it might be close to the trochlear fossa and it can actually perforate the trochlea and irritate the patella when movements are done and also whenever you are putting the screws always check for the notch view because sometimes the screw might be passing through the distal femur notch checking the notch view will help you prevent such a complication you can use a smaller screw in such a scenario which would be ending here only and if you want additional stability you can pass a leg screw from the medial to lateral direction just to supplement your fixation Otherwise, you need to put maximum number of locking screws in this area because in periarticular area, we want absolute stability. There should be no micro motion in the article block. However, we want the micro motion to happen here. Therefore, in combination part, there should not be any screw lying. So the next step is to place the remaining screws in the proximal part. Now you have to see whether your shaft or diaphyseal part is aligned with the lateral cortex of the metaphyseal part or not. So if this part is not aligned with this part, then you can place a cortical screw in this zone. And when you tighten the cortical screw, automatically this part is going to migrate close to the plate. So if there is any mismatch in this part and in this part, you can use a cortical screw to fine tune the contact with the plate. You can fine tune the alignment of the lateral surface of the diaphyseal region with the lateral cortex of the metaphyseal region. And the moment you are satisfied with the alignment, then you need not to tighten the screw further because further tightening can actually bring this fragment more towards the plate and can actually cause some translation in relation to the distal segment. So the cortical screw placement is not necessary at all. The only purpose of cortical screw placement in this part is to bring the plate closer to this part and when contact is already achieved proximally then the cortical screw will bring this segment more towards the plate and once you are satisfied with the alignment after putting the cortical screw then you can put the remaining locking screw in proximal part and the screw density has to be 50 percent in the diaphyseal region and three or four locking screws are sufficient if the bone quality is not good then four locking screws if the bone quality is good then three locking screws are sufficient in the proximal part now since we have already placed a locking sleeve in the proximal part we can use another locking plate to mark the areas for the remaining locking holes and since we need to maintain the 50 percent screw density in the diaphyseal part we have to keep the alternate holes vacant and the holes in between should be filled with screws so you see we have marked the locking holes in which we want to place the screw while maintaining the screw density of 50 percent so this screw is optional here the bone quality is good so we will be placing only three locking screws in the proximal segment we give a stab incision then using a locking sleeve we bluntly pass it inside the locking hole and tighten it so once we have placed the locking sleeve we we'll drill the track and put the screw inside so this kind of assembly we get after placement of the locking screws in the diaphysis so we have placed three locking screws in this part 
and fourth could have been used if the bone quality would have been doubtful but here the bone quality was good so three locking screws are sufficient in this kind of a bone and you see the metaphysical part which had combination has not been disturbed there are no screws in the zone however in the periartical part we have spanned it with maximum number of screws possible because we want absolute stability in this part while in this part we don't want any screw because it has to heal by callus formation or relative stability and this is our lateral view and these are the wounds after placement of the plate through the mepo technique we have to close the layer of idiotibial band first followed by the subcutaneous closer after that skin closer can be done and here you can just put the skin closer that is sufficient and apply a compression bandage for first 24 hours i don't have the follow-up radiograph of this case that i had shown you in the previous slides but this was a case which was a similar one which was operated through a mepo technique and you see we had not disturbed this part and this part has started healing with callus formation you see this callus formation is there in both ap and lateral view also you see the callus formation is there so these were the basic steps of mepo technique for distal femur fractures i hope that was helpful if you have any queries you can just put those in comments i will try to resolve them as early as possible thank you